Alexander was a really smiley, bright, kind, um, loving little boy, very wise for his years. When we received the diagnosis that Alexander um, had a rare brain tumour, I often describe that as living a parallel life and the grieving starts immediately, not because at that point you think that you're not going to survive it, um, but because everything that you had planned and that you thought you could do with this wonderful little boy um, was in question. So for instance, um, contact sports was no longer going to be an option for him and you know, what lay ahead was an unknown um, and that was very scary and everything is out of your control. So we set up the charity because through Alexander's experience and ours as his family, we knew the desperate need to have the services that a terminally ill child requires locally and that, that was the key factor for us. It has to be local. You know, life is a real struggle and a juggle, um, financially, emotionally, um, physically, in every way that you can think of it, you know, life was difficult. But the goal was to give him the best day, every day that he was with us. When we first founded the charity, um, we were very naive. Um, we didn't have any contacts. We certainly didn't have any capital to plow into starting up the charity. Um, and you know, we had two other small children to care for as well. The challenges in the early days was making people understand one, the need, and that there was a need, and two, what we were trying to provide. And in some ways, I think people did feel very sorry for me. They very much looked at me as a bereaved mum and you know, they felt very sorry. But I think they thought the, the vision, the goal was too big and how on earth would I ever achieve that? Um, so I think there was lots of trying to get through to people just how desperately this service was needed. We knew nobody, we were just a very ordinary family living a very ordinary existence. Um, and what I've learned um, since that, you know, fundraising um, is very much about connections and contacts, um, and which we've obviously built up over the years. But the positive of all of that, and um, I think a gift that Alexander has left um, for us, is that all of the people that have supported and helped, many of them are still with us today. And they've become actually really good friends. Um, so without Alexander's journey, we would never have met these wonderful people. Um, and we still wouldn't have them in our lives today. So that really is a blessing. Looking back over the last 15 years at key milestones um, and memorable moments, um, certainly for me has been when we raised sort of the first £5,000. Um, you know, that was quite unbelievable and what a huge amount of money. Um, and then when we raised the first 100000 and then the first 500000 and then the million and all the time building up the bank account to be able to build the hospice itself um, and one of the milestones was obviously to get the land and that did take a little bit longer than I had anticipated. The groundbreaking day was fabulous you know to have all those key people there that had been with us on the journey and our patrons such as Sir Michael um, it was really wonderful because he's been with us right from the get-go and believed and been hugely supportive in lots and lots of different ways. Three, two, one. Yeah. But on the day that we did open the doors officially to the children and the families, it was just amazing. Um, they literally just came running in, those that could, um, could walk and run, and those in wheelchairs all being pushed in their prams. And to see the expression of excitement and happiness on the faces of the parents was everything as well. Um, and they were literally like children in a candy shop. It was just gasps and smiles and excitement of all the rooms that they were viewing um, as they went through the corridors. My hope um, for the children's hospice service that we provide to our amazing children and their families is that they get the support um, and specialist care that they need and deserve um, throughout their child's life, however long or short that is. 
and I think the misconceptions about children's hospice care are, you know, it's two words, children's hospice, um, and everybody immediately thinks, gosh, that's just heartbreaking and heart-rendering and how awful and how sad. But actually, in a children's hospice, um, there is a lot of life to be lived, a lot of love, happiness and laughter. There are, of course, the very tragic and sad days, um, and we can't avoid those but we can be here for the family and the children to help walk beside them on those dark days and do all that we can to support them after their child has passed. My most treasured times here at the hospice are usually at the end of the day, perhaps when I'm the only one here locking up, and just to stand in the hospice and just to take that moment and just to say thanks to Alexander for being that guiding light and helping us to get to this point. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't miss him. I miss his laughter, his ability to see the bigger picture. Um, just he was a really decent human being because when there were hurdles and challenges and I would sort of be awake all night worrying about how we were going to overcome them, an answer always came and I do believe that's very much him guiding and looking down thinking it's okay mum I'll help you out here.